I want to talk to you about two things. Ali doesn't know I'm going to bring these two things up. Some news from the past week. First of all, one is one is one is kind of a positive one. One is a very sad one. The positive one is uh, we had the final episode of Better Call Saul, and I know you don't watch Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul, but let me just tell everybody that show. I is amazing. do love Bob Odenkirk, and oh, yeah. I would do an episode on Bob. Um, oh yeah, and I would watch Better Call Saul. For that episode, yeah, That's it's how much I love. Bob it's a, it's a bit tough. Uh, I think you kind of have to watch Breaking Bad to Damn get it. Better Call Saul, especially the end. For most of the run, you don't have to have watched Breaking. I watched Bad. the first two seasons of. Breaking Bad, that's not enough, eh? You no, gotta get all the way. No. Yeah. But anyway, that's okay. But Better Call Saul, I mean, it's some of the best acting uh, on the planet. Jonathan Banks, uh, Bob Odenkirk, and the biggest one is Ray Seahorn. Ray Seahorn is the best actor on television, in my opinion. Really? Male, female, doesn't matter. She is unbelievable. And I thought you pronounced her name Rhea, by the way, because it's R. H E A, but it's pronounced Ray. I realized in an interview with the other cast members. Anyway, a great series, a great series finale. It really uh, tied it up in a way that was appropriate for the show. Uh, Michael McKean was in the show uh, for s several years. He did one of the best acting jobs of his career. Uh, mm. Giancarlo Esposito. Anyway, it is just fantastic. So uh, we won't do a full episode on it, but I did want to bring it up because it just happened the other week and the other thing that just happened is a sad thing but it ties into one of our previous episodes so you might have heard this that the actress Anne Heche died yeah um, you know a few weeks ago she, she was, was in a very bar bad car accident that's I think, right. right and it was it was kind of touch and go from the from the get-go that's right? right and she so there's an article in the Washington Post which I'll link to which says why the media it's a question why the media declared Anne Heche dead twice or why did they all right mm -hmm. so it has to do with what we spoke about before which is this idea of neurologic determination of death so she was declared neurologically dead uh on a friday and then she was declared you know her heart stopped and they withdrew all the machines on sunday and you know, we again, we went through this whole thing in a previous episode, but the craziest part is the Washington Post obituary editor, whose name is Adam Bernstein, said that the newspaper doesn't recognize brain death, which is sometimes partial as a clear marker of death. It's not sometimes partial, Adam Bernstein. And he said, this is the quote from the obituary editor. It's black and white. There's no gray area here. If you're on life support, you're still alive. Other publications can make their own judgment about what they're comfortable publishing. I'm comfortable when someone is actually dead. Oh, my God. I mean, Interesting. listen, Adam Bernstein, go back and listen to our previous episode. There are <laughs> there are things to kind of discuss, as we mentioned, about the concept of brain death. I, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's crazy. So I did want to mention that because I'm sure people are going to be reading about this. Obviously, very sad to lose Anne Heche, um, a great actress in some of the really uh, big uh, movies uh, in the 90s uh, and, and early 2000s. But I did want to touch on that because I thought people would be asking that question about oh, what about Anne Heche? About the brain death. 